Greetings the Astro 30 here yet again and welcome back to AEL. Now if you're new to this channel please consider going down below and subscribing if you haven't done so already. That would be great. Cheers, thanks. Today I'm going to look at this MVA AP50 amplifier where this one over here, this particular channel is oscillating. This will be the last time I look at it before I either fix it or condemn it and just walk away. Because at the end of the day you've got to know when to walk away. You can't just keep doing the same thing over and over again and not get anywhere. It's, you know, a, a waste of time and energy. So what we need to figure out is why is this oscillating? So someone in the comments of the previous video on this when I was going through its oscillation problem said to get myself a can of freezer spray, which I've got here. And just go around and you know freeze some of the components like well capacitors or transistors in this case to see if we can pinpoint where the oscillation is coming from with it on the dim bulb and monitoring it on a scope to see if anything changes like does the dim bulb dim down when we spray something and does the oscillation stop uh, things like that someone also said it's it looks like a hundred hertz um, mains hum being injected on it, well, off of the filter caps. No, it's not the filter caps because these caps are connected and are common to both modules. And so this module is connected and without this one connected, this one operates fine. There is no 100 hertz hum there or oscillation. So it's something component wise on this particular module which is giving us problems. In the last video I went and tried adding in a series resistance of 0.22 ohm here on these fourth 0.47s just to bring it up to 0.69 similar to the other channel, but it's not the degeneration. Uh, we tried a few other things and they didn't fix the problem either. Piece of crap. So what I need to do is hook this back up to the dim bulb and I might actually use the portable oscilloscope uh, so it can be in the frame because I haven't used that in well no since I bought the other one so good good year and a half now so I'll hook that up and then we'll just try freezing some components around here I'm going to start with these two four six well two four five six maybe yeah, seven old transistors here. Just around here where this one, one microfarad capacitor, 0.1 microfarad capacitor I should say is, which is part of the uh, cascade VAS circuitry. And just see if anything changes. I mean we could have a dub, dud uh, TRP141 on the output channel here, but who knows. So let me get set up for that and we'll see if we can get something a little bit more satisfactory out of this. Okay, I got everything set up and it's turned on. I don't know if you can see the, um, the, the, the DSO here, but it is oscillating. So I'll start by spraying a couple of transistors. The signal appears to be shifting and the dim bulb is Dimming out a little bit. Okay. Interesting. All right, so it's not the input stage, but there is a definite shift in our um, signal here as it, it shifts in the DC range. Uh, that is that is interesting. I've got the probe in times 10 by the way just in case um, uh, we suddenly get a humongous spike in DC on the output. 
Uh, no, but I don't see anything that screams at me straight away. Um, interesting. See that? I'm touching this transistor here, and as soon as I do, actually that capacitor, as soon as I touch that capacitor, we get a change in our signal. That's, that's, that's interesting. Everything else looks stable. There's a little bit of a change when I touch that and a few of the current sources. Well, that was... That's interesting. When I touch this 0.1 microfarad capacitor, which goes across uh, the VBE multiplier, I believe it has one. It might be self-biasing, I can't remember. But as soon as I touch that, it completely changes. And the dim bulb is getting brighter. So. I don't know if that's because I'm touching the pins, but if I touch the pin, well, I can make it do that. But if I touch the capacitor itself, well, I can induce noise into that. Hmm. So these two capacitors here seem kind of um, kind of a problem. Nothing else seems to be causing an issue, but yeah, that capacitor is, hmm, I could try swapping it out, but that's like a 250 volt capacitor, I don't have a 250 volt. Um, I'm not sure what voltage it experiences across it, but if I keep my finger held on it, it um, causes the amplifier to do weird and wonderful things and the brightness of the dim bulb keeps going up and down. Hmm. And I don't know if anyone else can notice, but it, the signal is wandering up and down a little bit over the zero volt line. It's now going slightly under the zero volt line now. And this is just with it sitting idle. It's moved down a lot further past the zero volt line. That's, um, yeah. Of course, as soon as I touch that 1.1 microfarad capacitor, it, everything just shits itself. That's me introducing noise into the circuit, so... And that's through the body of the capacitor, which is... It shouldn't really do. So... I need a 100 nanofarad capacitor that's capable of 630 volt. Hmm. I had to refresh my memory. That capacitor down here that I was playing with is uh, the bypass capacitor on the Zener diode for the biasing network, which biases the output stage. So I don't have a 100 nanofarad at uh, 200 volt, but I've got a 630 volt. 47 nanofarad, which I'm going to see what happens when I actually put it across that capacitor that I suspect. So I've got to wait for things to stabilize, okay. Let's see if I can make any difference. No. All I'm doing is just inducing noise into the circuit. So that capacitor may not be faulty. 
So I need the respirate. Get the stuff everywhere. It's no change except for the DC level on the uh, signal. Yeah, no change. Hmm. Apart from a white snowy mess on the board now. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Um, yeah, no, so that didn't actually prove anything. And I'm just touching the input point of the circuit and it's not making any difference to the signal, so it's not actually even amplifying either. But the thing is, it wants to work, but I can't figure out why it's not. So, interestingly, that's now shifted. And that's as the free spray cools down. My dim bulb is really bright now. Hmm. That is very interesting, I must admit. Now, I don't want to just like go ahead and just start replacing transistors for no reason. Because um, that would be just pointless and stupid. But seems to me that there is an issue it's still a bit wet in here but there seems to be an issue um, around this area here and I'm not exactly sure what's causing it hmm yeah, this one's a this one's a difficult one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up the oscilloscope to the working channel. I'm gonna disconnect the channel that's not working. So we're not drawing excess current or anything. I just want to see if I can inject the same sort of noise by touching that other capacitor on the other side and see if it does the same thing. Um, so I'll just move this if I can get unhooked because the boot has moved. I hook up across uh, ground and this one, well that one there, it doesn't really matter where I hook it. Okay and I turn it on interestingly I mean there is noise there but it's picking up probably mains hum from the circuitry here because uh, that's me touching the input But me touching this capacitor isn't inducing any noise into the output. So, hmm, okay. That is interesting. Very, very interesting, Daniel Sun. I have no idea why I just said that. It's kind of stupid, but anyway. Um, yeah, uh, I really don't know with this thing. It's just really perplexing and annoying at the same time um, as to why it's doing what it's doing. And it shouldn't be doing any of it. But it is. And... 
Yeah, I've never actually had. So as soon as I touch the body of that capacitor, it all goes to hell. So I've never actually had an amplifier do that before. So I mean, I could try swapping out that 100 nanofarad capacitor with the 47 nanofarad and see if it stabilizes it. I don't know why it's doing what it's doing, but I might actually try swapping out this uh, 100 nanofarad capacitor with the 47 nanofarad just to see if it makes any difference. I mean, probably not, but um, something's got to, got to, you know, make this thing work because I'm all out of ideas at this point as to where to go with this stupid thing. Um, honestly, I am not happy with the build quality of this thing anyway. Um, it, it's, it's made in England for a start and it makes me kind of ashamed to even be associated uh, or related to the, the, the country that produced this piece of junk. Because um, it looks like it was just built in someone's back garden shed. Um, yeah, it's probably the worst, worst amplifier I've ever come across to be honest. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with this. I've messed around off camera. I did change out that capacitor with another one and it's still doing it. I changed the 47, uh, 470 picofarad to a ceramic here uh, because the one I put in was the old one and it's burnt. But yeah, no, that made no difference. Um, I really am not in the mood to continue on with this fucking thing, so I'm going to basically walk away from it and send it back as one working channel and the other one not doing anything, because, yeah, I just cannot fix it. Without, like, you know... Replacing every single goddamn transistor in the thing. Um, I'm not going to get anywhere with it. So I'm pretty much just going to say, look, I can't fix it. I'll charge him for what I've done. And just walk away from it. Um, and it can become someone else's problem now because it's just frustrating the hell out of me. So I, I need to move on to other things. So... That's it, I've called it. Not gonna do any more to it. Um, it's just really basically too frustrating and a waste of my time because it's not proving to be fruitful and nothing I do to it seems to fix the problem. So yeah, that's gonna be it for the MVA AP50. It's only a single mono working channel and I haven't even finished all the wiring to this damn thing, but yeah, what 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 does he expect me to do with it? I mean, it, it came in completely broken in, in like three pieces. So yeah, I'm gonna leave those two resistors in there. I mean, it's it looks a bit like Frankenstein, but yeah, who cares? Anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please go down below, like, comment, and subscribe. That's melted. Mm. Uh, if you haven't done so already, and this is the Astro 30 feeling a bit deflated and annoyed, saying, have a great day, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.